Now, John, it's, uh, it's quite a, a common um, idea uh, when talking about spiritual matters and teachers of the same that uh, we talk about the finger pointing at the moon. Uh, this is what one of our viewers, Jeffrey Webb, says just uh, the other day. Um, he quotes uh, Thich Nhat Hanh, the, the Buddhist monk on this. The teaching is merely a vehicle to describe the truth. Don't mistake it for the truth itself. A finger pointing at the moon is not the moon. The finger is needed to know where to look for the moon, but if you mistake the finger for the moon itself, you will never know the real moon. So I have to ask you, are you the finger or the moon? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I like that. <laughs> I've never been really too keen on teachers. <laughs> and I certainly don't like being called a teacher myself because I do not think of myself in that way at all. <laughs> No. <laughs> no. What's it like when a carrot is pulled from the ground? <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> the ground is left behind, isn't it? <laughs> oh dear. And the carrot is is lifted into another realm. That's how it is. All the teaching is left behind. Do you think the other carrots say to each other and say, one day, uh, what's it like to be, you know, to be, how would a, one carrot describe to another carrot what it's like? Of course, nobody knows, are they? They're sort of, <laughs> Then one day it happens. You're lifted out of this world completely. <laughs> yes. Well, there are stages in our father's house. There are many mansions. Sometimes you get a, a sort of glimmer. Sometimes you get a, a much fuller experience because it's, you know, the transition to spiritual life it isn't just one big jump and bingo. It's a ever, 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 it's an infinite expansion that has no end. Um, goes from glory to glory, as it's described in the Bible. From glory to glory. Teaching, gosh, I forget about it. <laughs> Something that's left behind. But of course, then people ask questions, don't they? And I suppose that pulls out of those of us that have been blessed to have some experience. That pulls out, as I'm, I suppose I'm trying to answer that question now. There are traditional teachings. There are those that come from real experience. Countless different teachings and versions. Of course, everyone that is pulled out of the ground will experience it perhaps in a different way. So take your pick, my friends. But ultimately what matters is to, to be taken out of the ground yourself. It's interesting, we can't take ourselves out of the ground, can we? And this, of course, is one of the cornerstones of true teaching, that we cannot do it on our own. We cannot save ourselves. We are saved by grace. 
we are taken. And that's the essence of meditation practice. We can prepare ourselves, we can present ourselves, in other words, be present. But the door, as it said, is open from the other side. Uh, I don't think any man can control it in any way. Maybe just like the sun shining through the clouds, quite unexpectedly, we are taken, lifted up, just like a carrot from the ground. And there's a, I forget if they're the words of Jesus or St. Paul, we are advised to make ourselves an acceptable sacrifice to the Lord. And I wonder what that means. Well, perhaps that means the plodding our way through the very simple basic steps of trying not to be critical of others, trying to accept life as it is, trying to be patient and persevere with our practice of whatever we're doing, meditate or prayer or something. All these basic steps are gradually, gradually uh, point us in the right direction and help us take our first few faltering steps towards the light. And then who knows where, how and when we may be taken. It would be, I think it would be true to say, John, that you do not uh, have a method, the John Butler method, apart from perhaps the well-known uh, feet on the floor, no, feet on the ground, I beg your pardon, get it right, Phil, feet on the ground, bottom on the chair, look and listen, but the, the whole opening up to what you now refer to as infinite completion um, you don't, you don't, there isn't the John Butler Highway Code. There's only, a, you only ever speak from your own experience. And is that the only way anybody else uh, can discover these realms? Oh, I wouldn't dare say it's the only way. No, I, I think anything that implies any sort of restriction or limitation is something to be avoided. No, I don't like words like only any more than right or wrong. It's what suits me. But you see, some people uh, find it very bit difficult. Some people absolutely can hardly function without a recipe. You know, they just have to have a book of rules. <laughs> Lots of people are like that. Um, it's not everybody wants to be free. Strangely enough, they don't. They don't. We feel safe within our prison walls, and uh, and uh, you know, want to refer to books and symbols and formalities and you know, priests and all sorts of things. Uh, the whole structure of of um, has evolved through history and various faiths. Yes. No, I don't like. Uh, I don't like to be too prescriptive in what I say. I like the old sayings: "Use your common sense and look to the stars." That's uh, one of your other favourite sayings, John. Don't fence me in. Don't fence me in, absolutely, um, yes. And I'm, I'm just reflecting that not only does it uh, refer, in your case, to your preference for the wide open spaces, mm -hmm. which you talk a lot about in your books, that's mm -hmm. where you feel most at home, but uh, does that also apply, don't fence me into any human institution like the... Uh, religious organisations or, or political organisations, anything that yes. de defines you? 
Yes, but it, 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 it wasn't something that developed. Uh, you see, like everybody, I was brought up in a con in conventionally, and, and I thought I had to conform. You know, I thought this was the right thing to do. This was my duty. And um, it took me many years to develop the confidence, really, to speak as I speak now from my own experience. I, I wasn't taught that at first. Um, in fact, I remember when it was at the School of Meditation where, where I learned to meditate. Uh, I think I must have been uh, probably well into my thirties before I was told to uh, speak from your own experience. And this was quite new to me at the time. And. Um, of course, it, it wasn't something I could just suddenly start doing just like that. It took me many years to develop the confidence I have now. In, in fact, the, the greater trust in my own experience rather than quoting from other, pe other people's experience. See, yes, that's what has become ever more obvious to me, that, that the reality of one's own experience is, is what one has to share that is the most valuable thing if I just so so and so said or so and so said this or this or that well I'm just a parrot aren't I just repeating I, uh, uh, um, yes, the, the, what's of what's of real value is what arises not only from the exterior experience, when I was in Australia, for example, I saw this and that, but what you experience in your heart, in your innermost, in your innermost being, which, which really, again, takes many, many years to develop. And, um, and to that I, I point to the great value of meditation, which has which has opened up more and more of my inner world and given me confidence to speak from that. So do you know, before uh, I ever do any of these videos, I make, I don't, first of all, I don't know the questions. I never know what Phil's going to ask me. And I make absolutely no preparation at all because the only thing that's needed is to be connected with what is present. And then it's that spiritual presence which gives the authenticity to what I say. It's nothing to do with John Butler at all. Now, of course, that takes years of practice to be able to say that. But when you realize that, it puts all our former pretenses really to know anything <laughs> or to have any abilities whatsoever to answer questions or be a teacher. It all just becomes laughable. <laughs> There's only one teacher in this world and that's the spirit. There's a spirit which is ever present everywhere in everyone all the time but we simply don't realize it. But find it. I often think it's more a matter of it finding us than us finding it. But one way or another, if we're fortunate enough to begin to get the hang of it, my goodness me, then... <laughs> you know, I love the old saying, two things have no limit, the foolishness of man and the mercy of God. Oh, poor little man, if you only knew. <laughs> oh, dear.